Hello, I'm Rick Steiner with Steiner Event Group. Welcome back to Lux Life Discovered. My co-host today is Shannon Richmond with the Panama City Beach Chamber. Welcome, Shannon. Thank you for having me. Good. And our guest today is Matthew Miller with Matthew Miller Art. Um, thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Well, good, good. So you're not too far. You're over in Tallahassee, so we're glad that you could join us remotely. But um, we look forward to seeing you Sunday. Of course, when this airs, the bridal show will be over, but we look forward to meeting you on Sunday and you being a part of that. So, Absolutely. Likewise. So, so tell me about your background, how you became interested in painting and doing the live painting and all of that. You know, I, well, it's a uh, funny story. I, I tell people that I, that I got into painting that I was, uh, I was self-medicating with art therapy and I ended up getting addicted. And so that's how I became an artist. Um, it's kind of tongue, a tongue in cheek way of explaining it, but it started out as a, as a hobby. And what I discovered as I was doing it is it, it made me feel great. You know, like when I'm painting, it kind of puts my brain in just like a different, different world, right? you know, you can escape all the, the chaos and the stress of daily life. And you can just kind of occupy a more peaceful state of mind. And so I got kind of hooked on it. And then eventually I was living in Denver, Colorado, and I kind of stumbled upon live painting. So if you go to a city like Denver, you know, you go out to a nightclub, like maybe some of these like little hippie concert venues, you might see a live painter. There's a lot of artists, there's a big live art scene there. So I got really into that for a while. Uh, eventually what I started doing was I would go out to like live music shows and I would paint a band. Hey, I'm going to paint that next band live during their set, you know? And so it was a thrill. It really is. It is such a thrill to you're right at a nightclub. It's dark. I have to use like a headlamp to see what I'm even doing. It's crowded. There's people watching and Oh man, that band's going to play for 45 minutes. I got to paint a picture of them like super fast. It's got to be the funnest thing I've ever done in my life. I have to tell you. Wow. And so, the, so for me, the, the trick from there is, okay, I love doing this and I think I'm pretty good at it. So how do I figure out, how do I make a career out of this? You know, and eventually I discovered that there are people who do live art professionally. Some of them do go to live music events and sporting events and they do it. And then there's also weddings, which uh, weddings isn't something that I got into until about 20 until 2020 later in that year, because a lot of my sports and music and all kinds of other events pretty much got canceled. So I lost a lot of opportunities due to the pandemic, but people were still getting married. So I decided, Hey, you know, I should kind of switch up and see if I can get some of these wedding gigs going. And that's kind of what I've been focusing on for the last couple of years. In addition to some of that other stuff too. Well, that's interesting because you obviously are good at it because if I, I don't think I could do it and think it's therapy because I would be so frustrated. It's like, what the heck is this crap? You know, it, it wouldn't be anything that I could ever I would have to take show anybody. Line. Well, I couldn't do that still. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it takes time. You have to put in the time to, to develop the skills and get comfortable doing it. But I think once you do get past that point where you are comfortable doing the activity itself, you can kind of get through that frustration and then your, your mind is, is allowed to calm down and, and relax and, and be a little more enjoyed. Uh, so when you're experience. doing the live painting, like at an event and you did something recently or at some point of a, at a baseball game, like, do you get, does the adrenaline start pumping oh, when you know when people okay. are watching? Does that. It is. And I, I think I have a, I have a background of, sports. You know, I played sports growing up. I played rugby in college. I've done the Ironman triathlon. So these are like very, you know, so I think there, there's something maybe about my brain where these kind of high intensity situations, actually they help me focus. So I focus more under those situations, but I'll tell you what, if I'm in, you know, I'm, I have a, a, an art studio in my spare room here, if I'm in there painting, I have trouble focusing because I can, you know, there's no, there's no pressure on me. So I kind of, I can relax, you know, I, I, I don't get as focused when I'm in my studio. And so that's really another career move for me personally was, 
you know, I don't want to get myself stuck in a situation where I'm like a studio artist spending all day painting alone in my studio. That's just not the kind of guy I am. Right. You know, and so it was, it was definitely a conscious move to make sure that, hey, being a professional artist is not easy to do. So if I'm going to do it, if I'm going to put in the work to do it, I want to make sure that I do it my way and I, and I can do the kind of art that I enjoy. And that's really just being out there in the world, uh, capturing in, uh, cool things going on. I mean, one of the here's a tip for artists, you know, artists who are looking for new ways. How do I get myself out there? How can I? find new ways to earn income and get new followers and fans. Well, here's something I did. I request a, a media pass at, at events. So you, you talk about a baseball game. In a couple of weeks, I'll be at the Florida State uh, b- baseball game on a Sunday afternoon. How did I get that gig? I requested a media pass because they let they let journalists and they let photographers get get special access to events so that they can record the event, whether in the form of photographs or a written article. Why can't there be original art done on site at these events? You know, so that's 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 my that's my mindset about, you know, I'm always looking at what's going on, what events are coming up, where can I go and and capture some stuff live, uh live on campus on canvas and uh be around people, you know, because that's networking, it's marketing and it's it's selling while I'm doing it too. Well, I was going to say, people are so fascinated when they see an artist working. And and when they can actually see that you took a blank canvas, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's that's here. That's now. That's now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine doing the, uh, the live painting during a concert. That just blows my mind. <laughs> it's, uh, it, I mean, it's, it, like I said, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I, and I think that there's the, the energy of the there's the music and the people and i'm just moving you know and so these paintings you know these paintings aren't super hyper realistic polished uh depictions of of a live band they're very loose they're very energetic and a little bit abstract as well but i think what makes them interesting is that you can when you look at them you're like yeah there was a hu- a very energetic human being painted this one i know it you know so you can see the energy in these paintings I was going to say, already, I've already determined this from just talking to you just now, is that being a rugby player and the way you like to paint with all the pressure, you're a very calm guy at home, right? A very what? <laughs> a very calm guy at home. <laughs> I have, you know, I got a, a very active mind and it's sometimes it's it's tough to quiet it down. And like I said, I think I actually need... Uh, some sort of challenge or very high pressure scenario to allow me to just, all right, let's dial it in and, 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 you know, get focused yeah. here. What's the quickest you've ever had to do a painting and what kind of time frame? Um, I, you know, there was one, there was a, an event that I did a couple of years ago where I was scheduled to be at a banquet to do a live painting. And I thought that I was just going to kind of be off to the side, just kind of doing a painting while people would kind of come and talk to me. And then when I actually got to the event, they wanted me to do uh, a painting on stage. And they're like, yeah, there's going to be a band playing for an hour and you're going to be over here on the stage and you're going to do your painting during this band, this band. And I and I just happened to bring a canvas that was like twice the size of what I was used to. And so I got a double the size canvas. And then they're telling me I'm on stage oh and I have God. one hour because one hour is it's I'm not I don't do a lot of like the speed painting because some of those people are awesome who can do that. And they'll do like an upside down right. portrait in five minutes. That's not something that I'm doing yet. I, I would like to build up to that. But anyways, it was, a, it was an hour painting and it was it was really big, a lot of pressure. But um, I, I guess so those situations, they br- it brings it out of me, you know, because if you told me, hey, you have to do the same painting at home in your studio, yeah. I would probably spend three weeks dilly dallying <laughs> on it because I can. Right. right. So you you finished that painting in an hour? 
Yeah, well, I ended up touching it up afterwards. Someone who was there ended up buying it, and I said, "You know what? It was. It needs a little. It needs a little more work." And that does tend to happen, you know. For example, at at a wedding, there's been a couple of wedding uh, that I've done where at the end of the day, I'm like, you know what? I want to take this home and spend a little more time making the bride and groom look a little more accurate, or just kind of clean some things up. And that that happens too. Sometimes I don't quite get it done. Uh, by the time uh, things are over. That's just a sign of a perfectionist, always wanting to touch it up, fine, t- fine tune everything. So you- so. Yeah, it's t- that's the tough part is figuring out when it's done. Right, you know? right. I, sometimes you keep working. Oh man, I had it and then I lost it because I kept working on it. That's, that's oh. one of the tough. So when you're painting and people are talking to you, can you have a conversation while you're still painting? Yeah, I can, you know, sometimes I'll pause, but other times I'm still putting paint on there and and talking at the same time. I have done a couple of live paintings over Zoom, actually. I did like a a podcast. It was actually a podcast interview and I actually painted a a live portrait of the guy who was interviewing me. So I guess I I could have just had my easel here. I could could be painting you guys right (laughs) now. See what you can do in 15 minutes. Yeah. (laughs) I'm I'm working on a little sketch right here on a piece of paper, um, but yeah, it's it's tough. It it um it it definitely it's it's challenging and um, sometimes because I'm there professionally when I'm doing this, and so the conversations I'm having they are they're professional conversations because these are potential buyers, sure. these are people that I want to network with and things like that, and sometimes it is challenging to be in creative mode where I'm so dialed in on this painting and then to actually kind of like be in a uh, business person or right. salesperson mode, you know? Um, but, but again, that's just part of the challenge that makes it a little more fun. So you're going to be at the bridal show tomorrow. Sunday. I will be on Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. And yep. what, what are you going to paint? Can you tell us? That's a good, you know what? That's a good question. I will, I will be painting there. But I will you be will doing wait to feel the energy and see what, what comes out you know i might do a sample like wedding painting maybe find someone i know and do a a painting of them or i might maybe i'll where i'm at in the expo maybe there's like a nice view and i can do like a live painting of the expo itself just kind of to kind of demonstrate what i can do because the particular thing that i like to do the best as a live painter is to capture the scene you know if it's a wedding hey let's capture some iconic features of the venue if it's at a music festival like what you know what was the 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 weather if it's an outdoor festival what was the weather like let's capture that sunset so trying to capture what's around me is what i really like to do the best and so maybe that's what i'll end up doing on sunday just to kind of demonstrate what i can do uh for the clients i think that's great you know what it's going to end up capturing what? Those girl cigar smokers. That's true. We've got a sure thing. Cigars will be there, and we oh, had them on earlier today, and they are talking about women smoking cigars. How much that's growing? And oh, really? I, so that's been our fascination today. Is like they're going to be there. <laughs> so they'll and be I'm there. Sure they'll be so. <laughs> so. I will incorporate some female cigar smokers, and maybe they'll want to, they'll want to buy the painting. But here, here, here's the thing. That you know, just just. I'm here. I'm giving out business advice for artists here. So that is how you have to think about live painting is, you know, it's, it's fun to go out and do it. Sometimes I just want to go out and paint and have fun and that's all there is to it. But other times, you know, when I first started doing it, there were times when I needed, I needed to get out and and sell some art because I needed to pay rent the next day or something. Right. You know, I, I got to go out and hustle some paintings. And so then you got to think, okay, what's going on? Where can I go and paint something where there's going to be a lot of people who might want to buy it? You know, so here's another example of something I've done is uh, a few years ago, I went to a James Brown tribute show. So guess what? It's full of James Brown fans, hundreds of them all in the same place. Guess what I did? I did a painting of James Brown at the show and obviously someone bought it. Um, And so these are, you know. And you can replicate that idea. Me personally, I like going to music venues. I like going to sports events and weddings are a good consistent gig to do as well. I really love doing those. But think of so many other hobbies and industries and just niches 
that artists could do live art for, you know, whether maybe like you're a comic book nerd and you want to go to a comic con and do live painting, you might do some sales there. If you're a dog uh, portrait artist, you know, going to dog events, dog shows, things like that, just getting yourself out there in front of your market, live painting is, is a really, really, um, there's a lot of potential, you know, to, to, to just get more of a following and make some sales, especially for people who are struggling, you know, cause I have to confess that I'm not a big social media guy. I wish I did. I wish I could figure out how to get a million followers and sell a ton of paintings just by posting them to, to Instagram, but I don't do as well with that. But what I can do is I can get out into the real world and do do art in front of people's faces, you know, in front of flesh and blood human beings. And that's and what works for me. It. And right. they post it. Yeah, and that's excited. true. Well, mm -hmm. I'm so excited to see what he's going to oh, do. I know. It. Well, another... Oh, no, lots of pressure now. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be texting you every 30 minutes. What are you thinking? What are you doing? And, uh, yeah. uh, another great place for live painters that I've thought about lately is grand openings. Because what more? That's what, fast. Well, it is fast, but he could fine tune or touch it up later. Yeah. But what what better piece of than what better to have than a piece of art commemorating your grand opening? Absolutely. I think that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But it is that's a quick another good process. Just hook up with mm -hmm. your local chamber and follow them around. And go to all their grand openings and ribbon that's cuttings, really true, business yeah. after hours, all their kind of things. That would at a, I think at a ribbon cutting grand opening they'd love to have yeah. that. They get a ribbon with their name on it, but to have a painting. That well, it stays there. in their office. Yeah, yeah. it's great. It's a great idea. Yeah, I have done a I have done a grand opening, but I didn't incorporate a ribbon cutting into the painting. But for an, for another one, that's another good idea to pitch out there. So oh, that is a good idea. All right, we're going to send you a bill for that idea. So <laughs> okay, you'll, you'll, you'll receive our invoice. <laughs> we want a royalty. That's what we want for every one you do. We want five percent. Okay. <laughs> what about the ideas I'm providing here today? Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so no, excited. It's going to be great. So I know it's in, on Instagram, we have some mutual friends in Northwest Arkansas. So what was your, you were in Missouri for a while, right? Yeah, I'm from Missouri and I ended up living there. I ended up going back there in 2020 until a couple months ago. And I, and I came back to Tallahassee. Okay. So I spent the last couple of years in Missouri. All right. I'm going to look real quick while we're. What did you do before you decided this is your world? This is what your art? passion is. All yeah, before you started art, what did you do? You know, I've been a little all over the place. I was in a I have a master's degree in philosophy and I was originally wanted to be a professor. So I was going to get a PhD and be a philosophy professor, but along the way I kind of got distracted. I wasn't I guess I'm not really cut out to for like the academic career, I guess. So I kind of just started getting distracted. Um, I worked in fitness for a while. And so for a lot of the times that I was an artist, I worked as a fitness coach at Orange Theory. I'm sure you're familiar with Orange Theory that. Fitness, very popular group fitness. It was a, I loved it. It was such a fun job. And I was balancing that with art. And it was actually a really good, um, good arrangement, actually. And so I've usually always had an, another another career, another job in addition to art. Because one of the things that I learned was when the pandemic hit, I did lose a lot of my, my, I, my fitness job kind of got shut down for a while. And so I was relying on doing art full time, spending, I spent way too much time in the studio alone, you know, during that year or so. And it really just it wasn't good. So I'm, I'm actually perfectly happy really focusing on doing live art on the weekends and having something else going on during the week, you know? And so that's something I'm, I'm kind of working on getting something new to kind of fill in that gap of uh, some, you know, something to, to do during the week, a reason to get out of the house and take a, take a shower and, and go, you know, go out and leave the house and go be around people. You know, I, we need that. You know, I think I, I need that. Yeah. Well, that's true. Well, so what, what has your, been your biggest challenge with live painting? What do you think the biggest challenge has been as far as like location, environment, or whatever? Hmm. You know, um, 
biggest challenge live painting is um getting getting in touch with the right people i think okay because personally i had like I, I have a big vision for the potential of what live art can do for my career but also in general in general like think of all the potential places where live art could be appropriate mm -hmm. you know i've been to some college sports games i've been to some local music festivals and and concert venues but there are larger scale versions of all that you know we had the super bowl last week there's the olympics there are massive concert venues where there are big name shows happening every day. And how much of these things are being captured in the form of an original painting? How often do you see a painter at a, at a really cool event, like capturing it? And um, I have, you know, I have like a unlimited uh, aspiration for the kinds of places that I ultimately want to be in the places that I want to do live art. And the challenge is always, how do you talk to the right person, the right decision maker, who's going to give, who's going to give it some thought because not everyone is looking for live painters. There's not a need, there's not like a budget set aside to hire a live painter for things. And so you really do need to make sure that you get someone's attention and that they can actually kind of see what you're talking about by of of what is live art because not everybody even gets it, you know. Yeah. And so just sending an email and just having some social media posts and waiting for someone to see your social media posts isn't usually enough. I'm more of a guy who like I want to make calls. I want to stop by. If I'm in town, I'm going to go show up and shake your hand and try to talk to the right person that's going to that's going to get me access to the places that I want to be to do uh to paint. I think your biggest thing is word of mouth. You're out there doing it and then everybody's going to start talking about it. That's how I would promote you. I'd get you and put you somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, I I think it's similar to like a, a stand-up comedian. Yeah. When you, if you're starting out as a stand-up comedian, you kind of have to go out and do your five minutes or 10 minute sets for free. You know, you're doing a lot, you're going out, you're doing a lot of free work over and over and over until you get to the point where maybe people start to like you and then you'll start getting paid gigs and things grow from there. And I think the same thing with me is, you know, I, if I, especially if I'm in a new city, you know, where I don't have a reputation, hey, I just need to get out there, yeah. you know, just go out show up places, paint, 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 get people to see it. And then eventually people like, Hey, you know, there's that guy. He's always, he's like, he's always out. Like that's that same guy. We keep seeing him. You know, he's always, he's always at like these places painting and stuff. And and then it builds from there. Yeah, I think so. That's, that's so bucket list of places to do a lot of painting. Where, where's your top? Oh man, I I want to tease out loud. you know, one thing that I would like to do, like I said, I'm, I've been to a couple of Florida state games, but I haven't been to a football game. I know football is oh, like wow. the big yeah. thing. So I would love to be in that stadium this fall at a Florida state football game, preferably on one where like ESPN is going to be there and they can, uh, <laughs> right. be on national TV. Be like, Look at this that's thing. one of them. <laughs> and there are, you know, um, a, a lot of bands, you know, I love painting bands and there's some of my all time favorite bands that I would like to paint. I'm, I'm kind of a metal head. So I listen to a lot of uh, heavy metal music and there's a few festivals going on this year with, with some of the, my favorite bands will be there. And that's something I'm working on behind the scenes, trying to get in touch with the right people from these festivals to see, Hey, why wouldn't you want some guy there doing a painting of these headliner bands at your festival? So those are, those are some shorter term, like this year that I'm um, kind of these like bigger goals that I'm working on. Well, we do have Gulf coast jam I was here. Say. <laughs> Coming to I our saw that. I did see about that. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll have to talk about that. They have a great line. We might know yeah. the decision makers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll hook you up. We'll talk. Okay. <laughs> good deal. Great. Well, now I say that would be a good. And, and, that would be yeah, awesome. It would be. Mm -hmm. So there's, yeah. So the, um, there's so many opportunities that, because I've always thought of live painters of being a wedding planner, an event planner, mm -hmm. mainly weddings. And then I did yeah. think about the grand opening because it's something they can keep and Absolutely. retain and have in their office. But um, 
you've taken it to a whole different level that I didn't think of, like with sporting events, uh, you know, concerts, that type thing. You know, the fans want yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, and I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm the pioneer. There are, you know, I didn't mention this. When I was in Denver, the first time, the first few times I ever even did it, it was at a, a nightclub where there were all these paintings of bands on the walls at this place, all these really energetic, abstract musician paintings and i realized that these paintings on the wall at this venue were done live by some some guys who've been doing it longer than i have so there are some people who have been who are pioneers in this kind of newer direction of live painting who are taking it beyond weddings beyond you know corporate parties and going to big sports events big music events so there are a, there are a handful of of really successful, really um, accomplished live painters out there. But I, I definitely have to emphasize, and this again, it's something that artists who are trying to think of new ways to do business, there's not a lot of live painters out there. And, and you have to realize how many opportunities there really are. You know, and I say that because I think there's plenty of plenty of opportunity to go around so I'm not, you know, trying to hide any secrets from anybody. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Well, Matt, I appreciate you being with us. I can't wait to meet you Sunday. Um, I can't believe 30 minutes has already gone by so quickly. But um, wow. yeah, it was good. It was good. Good. Good talking to you guys. Yeah. So just tell the everybody watching and listening um, how they can get in touch with you, and and then we'll wrap it up here. Yeah, sure. Thing. Well, it's behind you there. So, uh, okay, it's behind uh, us. Matthew, okay, yeah. Okay. Matthew, MatthewMillerArt.com is my website and um, Matt.Miller.Art.Experience uh, on Instagram. Matt Miller Art Experience on Instagram. Just look, <laughs> just look for it. MatthewMillerArt.Com. And uh, yeah, I mean, here's the thing if you're interested and you got an idea for a live painting, get in contact with me or if you're if you're another artist and you're intrigued by what I do and you want some tips or just want to talk to another artist about about this sort of thing I would love to hear from uh, anybody who would like to uh, get in contact with me all right well thank you anything you want to say Shannon no I can't wait for Sunday yeah <laughs> I'm looking well, forward to it too. well again thank you so much and thank you for watching and listening today on Lux Life Discovered we will see you next time Check out Lux Life Discovered on Facebook and Instagram and on 30a.tv. See you next time on Lux Life Discovered.